Yeah, Pasa YouTube, how's it going everybody? Got for y'all today a Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle against Little Lotus. I had this at my most recent stream and before I talk about Team Preview, I want to say that tomorrow the first part of my 10k special will be uploaded, so be on the lookout for that. And the day after that will be the second part of my 10k special. Also, happy early holidays everybody, hopefully everyone is enjoying their break. And yeah, anyways, Team Preview, I made this really fun team based around Panchamp with a sticky web support but my opponent has an espion <laughs> which means as long as that thing is around my smeargle will literally be doing nothing in this battle so i have to find some way to get rid of that but looking at threats on cynthia's team Mido king just destroys my team with any of its stab or coverage moves so i really have to watch out for that also, Crawdon could be a problem if it turns out to be Choice Banded or Dragon Dance because I really have no form of priority outside of Aqua Jet on my Azumarill, so I gotta watch out for that. And then Dragon Dance, Dragonite could sweep through my team, especially after two of those, so I really have to watch out for that. So she does have quite a bit of threats on her team. But I'm gonna be leading off with my Exedro, expecting her to want to lead off with the Espeon, thinking that I would want to lead off with my Smeargle, but no. She actually ends up leading off with the Rotom, and knowing that I would speed defensive Rotom, I'm just gonna stay in and go for the safe Earthquake. But she turns out to be offensive, knocks out my Exedro with the Hydro Pump, and turn one, this is really not going well for me. So expecting her to be locked into Rotom because normally any form of offensive Rotom is either Scarfed or Specs. I'm going to bring in my Salamence knowing that this is my perfect chance to get up one Dragon Dance because I was really positive she wouldn't switch directly into her Dragon Knight. So this way I'm guaranteed to knock something out on her team. As she brought in the Arcanine she's just going to go for the Extreme Speed which does a pretty good amount of damage. And I wish that I had Roost on the Salamence because if I had Roost on this Mence this would have been just so much better for me. But I do just go for the safe Earthquake easily knocking out the Arcanine I'm at plus one speed and plus two attack and you would think that my Salamence can just sweep their team at this point right no she has his Dragonite which even though I am at plus two I really do not want to risk the fact that she could possibly live a Dragon Claw and I know Salamence will definitely be a major help later on in this battle so I make the safe switch into my Azumarill as she then goes for the Earthquake and I go for the Play Rough obviously because his Dragonite was in multi scale range she is going to be able to live this hit as it turns out that she has the weakness policy so this thing is sending a plus two attack I need my Azumarill because it will definitely come in handy later in this battle so I decided just to fodder off my Pangoro because at this point the two most expendable team members are Smeargo and Pangoro so I decided to fodder off Pangoro over Smeargo on the off chance that I could get rid of Espeon and then possibly get up my Stealth Rocks or Sticky Web with Smeargo and I really wish Pangoro would have done something in this battle but there will be a time where Mark Henry will reign and destroy a team I can guarantee you that so I can get a free switch back into my Salamence nothing or a team likes to take a Dragon Claw so I'm gonna go for the safe Dragon Claw because I do not want to mess around with this Dragonite and as I said nothing on a team will take the hit so I'm a plus one attack I don't want to take the unnecessary damage from a Volt Switch coming from this Rotom so I'm gonna make the safe switch into my Aegislash and I was really positive she wouldn't go for something like a Will-O-Wisp because Choice Rotoms don't normally carry that although they do carry Trick so I guess she could have gone for that but in the end just Aegislash was my safest switch and in hindsight maybe I should have brought in my Smeargle because now my Aegislash took some unnecessary damage and I'm going to be forced to switch out anyways because this Needle King is a huge threat so I bring in my Smeargle just as Death Otter because as I said earlier Pangoro and Smeargle are their least helpful team members to me right now and with Pangoro gone I kind I have to fight off my Smeargle which sucks because now I will not get any form of entry hazard up as she knocks me out with the second flamethrower although now I can get a free switch into my Azumarill and I'm going to predict her to want to switch out and I'm going to go for the safe play rough knowing that nothing on her team appreciates taking this hit as she brings in the Rotom. It's going to take this play rough pretty well for it being an offensive Rotom but then I'm going to go for the Aqua Jet because I do have the splash plate unfortunately even after the boost it's not going to be enough to knock out this Rotom which sucks because Having this Azumaro for Aqua Jet would have been really nice to get off that extra damage on Espeon and Needle King. Unfortunately, that is not the case as she knocked me out with the Volt Switch and she's going to bring in her Needle King. At this point, my last two Pokemon are my Aegislash and my Salamence. Unfortunately, I make the worst switch in that I could have made and I bring in my Aegislash thinking that this was a Choice Specs Needle King because she hadn't been switching a move. So by forcing her to lock herself into Flamethrower or Earth Power, I could bring in Salamence and go for the Dragon Dance, but then I come in and just go straight for the Earthquake thinking that she would go for the Ice Beam, so just 
Oh, that was so stupid of me losing my Aegislash for literally no reason, but at this point I still have a chance to win this battle, so I knock out the Needle King as she brings in the Espeon. Espeon is faster than my Salamence, but I'm very positive I can live any one hit that she wants to go for, so I live the Psy Shock and I go for that Dragon Dance. At this point I am faster than her whole team, so I'm gonna be able to outspeed this Espeon and easily knock it out with a plus two stab Dragon Claw. But I kind of forgot about the fact that she has a Crawdon, which means if it has Aqua Jet, I lose. And she does have the Aqua Jet, and she's going to be able to knock me out above that to rub salt in the wounds. She gets a crit, and that's going to be the victory in her favor. So in the end, I was kind of fighting an uphill battle and didn't quite make it. But it was really fun. I did enjoy this battle. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it as well. If you missed my previous upload that is playing on your screen right now. And uh, as I said, guys, tomorrow will be the first part of my 10K special, so be on the lookout for that. And yeah, I will see y'all soon. So later, everybody.